But there came in, you know, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SNCC, CORE, all of those, was that nonviolent civil disobedience would provide a means for expression uh, of things that are free speech, but that the government didn't want to allow to be expressed, like walking down to the courthouse and registering to vote. Um, I mean, that's what was met with incredible violence. In the early 60s. Yeah. Now it's just met with incredible lawsuits. <laughs> um, but the same fight. I mean, people have to be registered. People have to get out and register. It's hard. It's scary. So uh, Ferguson uh, reminds you a lot of um, the early 60s and the Civil Rights Movement. Yes. Particularly because it's not Watts, it's not riots, it really isn't. Um, and, I mean, Linda's expressed it very well to people in St. Louis, who of course are much, you know, a lot of our people we know are kind of reactionary. And she's saying, well, wait a second. You know, he, he was shot like six times, shot in the back. His body was left lying in the street for four and a half hours, thrown into an SUV. You know, I mean, what the hell? No wonder people are pissed off. <laughs> what uh, what pro what kind of protests have you seen there? What uh, what's the nature and demeanor of the protesters? I was just there for one demonstration that was on the twenty second of October, which was a national day against militarization and brutality by police and I ended up walking, I don't know, close to four miles that day um, in Ferguson and we passed all kinds of people and, and people in their front yards and said hello and, mm -hmm. and I did not feel the hostility um, that I expected from anybody um, and even the police seemed to understand that we were there and that they could only make things worse, not better. Um, and they yeah, were reasonable. Uh, I think a couple of kids threw some water bottles at them. And, yeah, probably went in and got one person or something that night. I was wearing my legal observer hat. Uh, people knew what that was, happy to see it. I'd also met with people and the uh, more <clears throat> more office that are coordinating a lot of the protests were working on Occupy in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, did you tell me that you had uh, gone to the same high school as uh, Andrew Goodman? Is that... No, no, no. He, <clears throat> he, he, I think he went to high school in Queens, but oh. um, did, didn't you have some connection? Some well, my my one. My, I was with my parents and my brother um, driving through the south and I guess, I guess it was 1964 perhaps um, and we stopped in Jackson and we, um, we were involved in CORE in the north and my... The Congress of Racial Equality? Yes. And my parents had um, family um, in different places in the South. We visited some of them. Some of them we didn't visit. Um, we also visited um, a black woman and her husband that had worked for my grandmother in Boston uh, many years ago. And um, went to their church with them. and. My, my mom had always contributed to help them with their church when they moved back to um, a, a little place in Georgia. Um, but anyway, uh, Wayside, not Waycross, but Wayside, Georgia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, anyway, and when we stopped in Jackson, my mom, well, and also I guess in the north, she, she got to be friendly with the, the mothers. Uh, of all mm -hmm. three of them, um, 
James Cheney, Michael Schwerner, and Andrew Goodman. Mm -hmm. The three people that were killed in the South, yeah, uh, and trying and to register people to vote. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. And two of them lived in the New York area. Yeah, right. right. I mean, in St. Louis, Michael Brown's mother knows my brother-in-law. They work together at a deli counter hmm. at Straub's Deli. Straub's, it's like a Whole Foods kind of place. Mm -hmm. And um, we wrote her, and we actually got together with um, her best friend. Was like an aunt of Michael Brown, and talking with them, and, and one of the problems that she has is people trying to tell her where she can talk, what she should be talking about, kind of. And, mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I'm trying to offer her, if she wants it, is a forum, either through Left Bank Books or the Ethical Society, to just talk about what she wants to talk about. In New sometime. York? Uh, or No, no, St. Louis. I'm oh, sorry. I see. Okay. Um, and so in, in many ways, <clears throat> the world is, you know, six degrees of separation at most. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're all connected. Um, People in St. Louis that Linda knows, people that she's very, very close to has known, <coughs> well, her stepdaughter, for instance, mm -hmm. um, you know, have the most reactionary and stupid ideas of what's been going on and happening and why and things. And I'm constantly reminded of one of my favorite posters. Um, I'm trying to remember how it's phrased, but... Um, Class analysis is knowing which side you're on. No, or wait. And then class um, is knowing who's there with you. Mm -hmm. In any case, it's, mm -hmm. I could quote it better. But um, the thing is that people in St. Louis who mm -hmm. are victims of the same stuff, I mean, who live near these garbage dumps that are burning for years next to nuclear waste they disposed of from Monsanto and from, you know, the uh, Cromaloy and whatnot. <coughs> they don't even realize the same people are doing that that are, you know, keeping down everybody in Ferguson. Mm -hmm. um, and spending money that they could spend on toxic cleanup on militarizing the police. And that leads to incidents like what happened to Michael Brown. Yeah. Cut. Yeah.